Church, meron po tayo, uh, pupunta po tayo sa anniversary ng ating Mother Church. So, before before we leave po dito by 12pm, pakain po muna tayo and then we will gather po para po sa transportation. Ayan, so without further ado po, uh, tinatawalan po na po ang ating worship leader for today, si Bro Abel. Thank you po, uh, this is Hazel sa pag-ano po. Uh, good morning po sa lahat. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, para po walang sigla, kailangan pa po ba natin mag-ano, yung exercise, hindi na po. Okay po, start na po natin. Uh, nung... Mga unang buwan ko po ng pagdalo sa GICN sa church po. Uh, pag may nagko-call to worship po, ang lagi ko pong naririnig is, Are we blessed? Di ba po, uh, God always bless us every time and every day. Amen po. So lalo na po kapag nasusunod natin yung uh, mga kautosan niya, lagi po uh, tayong be blessed. Gaya po nung sa, sa Psalm 128 verse 1. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to Him. Um, pagsunod po natin sa kautosan ng Diyos, eh nagmumula po sa takot. Hindi po yung takot na writing or yung nanginginig ka. Basta yung takot po ng merong respeto, meron pong paggalang at pagmamahal. Pagmamahal po sa katakilaan niya sa, atin, sa, sa ating buhay. And uh, our Lord is an uh, awesome God. Good morning po. <laughs> Our Lord is an uh, awesome God na sa matuwid nating pagsunod sa kanyang mga kautusan, uh, binibigyan niya po tayo ng blessing. Minsan po yung blessing na hindi po natin napapansin. Blessing na po pala yun. And uh, sa pagsunod po natin doon, yun po yung mga... Yung awesome po is uh, binib binubuo po ng word na O na ibig sabihin po is reverence, obeisance, at deference. Ito po yung mga meaning po nito kapag isa-isa po natin to Yung kahulugan po is isa lang. Which means po is respect and pagalang. Uh, kaya po marapat lang na igalang natin yung kautusan ng ating uh, Panginoon at sundin ng mga ito. Uh, para po magkaroon tayo ng maligayang buhay at uh, yung kaloob po ng pagpapala niya sa atin sa pag nagpapakita po tayo ng paggalang at uh, takot sa mga ito. Uh, sa sa John, uh, 2 John 1.6 So acknowledge and walk in obedience to His command as you've heard from the beginning. His command is that you walk in love. Hindi po basta takot lang. Kailangan po meron din pong pagmamahal. Para po tayo ay maging mapalad. Mapapalad po yung bawat isa na, 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 uh, isa na natatakot sa Panginoon na lumalakad sa kanyang mga daan. Uh, uh, para po kapag tayo po ay sumusunod o nasusunod natin yung mga ito, bibiyayaan po tayo ng ating Panginoon uh, na pag nagpakita po tayo ng tawat at uh, paggalang sa mga kautusan niya. Ito po yung ibibigay, na, ibibigay niya sa ating pagpapala. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessing and prosperity will be yours. Amen. Amen. Uh, ngayon po, tinatawagan ko na po yung UPM para po mag, uh, magpuri sa ating Panginoon uh, sa pamamagitan mo ng praise and worship. Ito ba ito yung Amen. Uh, indeed, no? Uh, tinutukay ni Brother Erbel na characteristics ni Lord is really um, baga, yung fear yung reverent fear na tinatawag so it talks about yung highest respect na binibigay natin sa Panginoon and we you know uh, as we worship Him today um, let's give Him the highest respect, the highest praise that we can give Him uh, by using our voices for worshiping Him in your very own uh, special way. Okay? So, 
I invite everyone to sing you with us. salvation day after day. So, today let's allow our hearts with the overwhelming gratitude sa Panginoon. Diba? Sing it out. Sing it out with us.
next song is a new song. It's called Tremble. It talks about our oath, our awesome God. How powerful, how holy He is. The, at the sound of His name, everything trembles. That's how powerful His name is. So let's sing out to our powerful God. Surrounding me, let it break. That your name still call the sea to steal. The region be the steal. Every wave, at your name, Jesus, Jesus, you made the darkness tremble. Jesus, silent fear. Jesus, Jesus, you made the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. All this promise to me, all this love to sing once again.
powerful. And Lord, this song, this next song, Lord, expresses our desire, Lord, to follow you, Lord, to build our life upon you, Lord, to be our foundation, Lord, sa lahat ng bagay, sa lahat ng ginagawa namin, Lord, sa lahat ng pag-iisip namin, ikaw ang iisip namin, Lord, to glorify you, Lord, to praise your name, Lord Jesus, Lord.
spirit. Your fear, which is praise to respect, Lord. The highest respect, the highest praise, Lord. Which you only deserve, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We glorify your name. In Jesus, my name we pray. scripture reading for today comes from book of Matthew chapter 4 verses 18 to 22. Verse 18. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Verse 19. At once they at once they left their nets and followed him. Verse twenty one. Treasure Mountain is back there. 
Sabi ng tatay, Just follow me and I will leave you alone. And on top of that hill was a lamp. The father again told the children, Pick up the lamp. Nagtanong na naman yung mga bata, Why do you have to pick up the lamp? Sabi yung mga bata, Nung tatay, Just follow me. And I will lead you along. Next, the father walked across a valley and up another hill. This time, next to a river. Now, where we are going? Na inip tay mga bata. Alam niya excited na mga bata to get to the treasure mountain. This isn't the way to the treasure mountain. And at the top of that hill was a ladder. The father told the children to get the ladder. Pick up the ladder. Siyempre pagka kinuha mo yung ladder, kailang bigbitin. But it's too heavy, the children said. Why do we need to carry the ladder? And then the father said, follow me and I will leave you alone. Next, the father started walking, this time, to the treasure mountain. They climbed higher and higher and higher, walked through lots of big rocks, but soon they came to a cave. This is the entrance to the treasure mountain, the father said. It's up high and we can't reach it, said the children. What do you think we should do? Answer? Let's use the ladder. Amen. And so, they climbed up the ladder and went into the cave. But what do you think can they expect inside the cave? It's so dark. If they got into the cave, it was really dark. They couldn't see anything. What do you think we should do? The father asked. I know. We can use the lamp. The girl lit the lamp and they walked through the tunnel deeper and deeper and deeper into the treasure tunnel. Soon, they came into treasure chest Bahul. this pressure is for you the father said but it's locked what do you think we should do the children got the key I know we can use the key the boy used the key to unlock the treasure chest and they were amazed with what they saw inside the chest. I look for this story because it's about following an authority. And here you can see what it really means to follow. It shows us the full submission to the Father, leading the children to the treasure that He has prepared for them. Without entertaining any questions, the Father simply told them to do whatever He said. A figure of authority that is gentle and loving, the Father took them to what he has promised to take them to the treasure of them. Join me in a short prayer. Father God, we thank you for a wonderful week that you have uh, given to us all. Thank you, Father God, for uh, this day that you have gathered everyone in this uh, worship call on the run. We will give you praises and uh, glory of God to thank you, to be grateful with uh, everything that you have given to us and what you think.
giving to us. And I thank you for this uh, opportunity once again that you have provided me with to speak before uh, your children and to deliver your words to them, O oh God. We ask, my mom, that uh, the words that uh, we are going to receive from you this uh, morning, my mom, will uh, pierce our hearts and uh, uh, we, we will use it in uh, our daily lives, my mom. Uh, you see my duty coming on in this um, pulpit. May only your name and you be glorified. I know um, in the core of nothing else. In the core of nothing else. In Jesus' name, Amen. Maganda po yung story, no? Para pang bata. Kasi sa mga tanong pa yun, tayo po lahat, mga bata. Marami sa atin, pasaway, hindi ka agad sumusunod. Di ba? Kaya hinahalin tulad tayo lagi sa mga tupa. Kasi yung mga tupa, yun talaga pasaway. I remember Sister Hazel uh, telling us uh, a story about their vacation in, in Oman. May mga tupa daw talaga na talaga umaalis. When they hear their master uh, call their coven, lumiling nung sila bumabalik sa pila. Pero after a while, umaalis na naman. No? So, ganun po tayo sa, uh, sa totoo. We are just like the sheep. Heard of sheep. Maraming sa atin sumusunod. Pero sumusunod lang pagka narinig yung boses. But without the voice, nawawala na tayo sa ating direction. I'd like to once again read our passage for today. On Matthew 4, verse 16 to 28. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee. Oh, I'm sorry. Assign the right control. Ready na? Ready na? Yes, pa, ready na. Oh. Ready na. So, a question here arises whether 
Jesus calls on random people, simply random people, or he chooses someone from among his followers to be his disciples. I'm not speaking here of the predestination that we have heard of, as we are all adopted children of God when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Ito po yung explain ni Paul sa book of Romans. Sabi niya sa Romans 8 verse 29, For those God for you, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those He predestined, He also called. Those He called, He also justified. Those He justified, He also glorified. I'm not really uh, talking about this being chosen, being called. Rather, I'm speaking about the discipleship. Or, pwede natin sabihin na leadership, which Jesus makes only as an invitation to people he knows. Why do I say that? In the synoptic account of Matthew, um, like what we have uh, read in the passage, it may seem that Jesus met the brother Simon Peter and Andrew only for the first time. However, if we are going to check the account of uh, John, when John the, John the Baptist first saw Christ, when he was baptizing in the river of Jordan, Andrew there already met Christ and introduced him to him his brother Simon. Jesus during this meeting, pinangalanan niya pa nga si Simon bilang Cephas. Or, it translates into Peter. So, Simon the Cephas or Simon Peter. Si Jesus po ang nagbinyag doon kay Simon Peter. So, there's a first verse na binasa natin. Simon Peter alam natin na meron lang name na Simon Peter. And so therefore, it does simply mean that it's not the first time that Jesus had seen the brothers. <clears throat> uh, let's take a look at uh, first, uh, John 1 verses 25 to 42. I invite you to John, John 1 verses 25 to 42. Para ma-tingan po natin, ma-check natin. No? Why do you be baptized if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? Pertaining to John the Baptist. I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. Is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to unite. Untie it. This all happened in Bethany on the other side of Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave his testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went 
and saw where he was staying. And they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. The two disciples here, the followers of John the Baptist, sino kaya yun? Verse 40, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him. Ayun ba, no? Nakita natin. Nag-meet na talaga sila. First in this story. We have found the Messiah, that is Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. Sana tayo lahat laging ganyan ito, no? After we found Jesus, we call on our brother, we call on our sister, we call on someone, someone who's dear to us. And right away, introduce natin si Jesus sa kanila. Amen? Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. So, that's why we established na hindi bagong magkakilala sila Jesus at yung magkapatid na si Andrew and Simon Peter. Now, we may also refer to the a cross-reference in uh, the account of Luke. Let's check the account of uh, the book of Luke, verse 5. This is, by the way, the book of uh, <laughs> Brother Sherwin. Very afraid kami, Brother Sherwin, sa iyong ano po, sa iyong assigned book. And uh, allow me to read from ESV, verse 5, uh, verse 1. This is Luke 5, verse 1 to 11. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. The Sea of Galilee, by the way, is just a lake. And Gennesaret is just another name of the Sea of Galilee. And in verse 1, something that's not mentioned in the account of Matthew, mayroon pong crowd doon sa tabi ng Sea of Galilee together with Jesus. What do you think they're doing? Ito na yung pagsisimula ng pag-minister ni Jesus that time. So Jesus is being surrounded by the crowd. Ano po? So, hindi lang si Jesus, hindi lang sila Andrew, sila Simon yung tao doon, sila John and James, kundi marami pa pong iba. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, Ikaw ba naman sasakay ka sa boat kung hindi mo kilala yung mayari? Di ba? Sa ating karecho, no? Which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. Tulak mo ng konti, yun tayo sa bandang gitna. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toil, toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. Ano sabi ng father sa story kanina? Just follow me. Okay? And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish. And their nets were breaking. They signal to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They have partner fishermen on the other boat. Who do you think those partners are? And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sing. Ganun kadami yung catch nila. Imagine they stayed all night but didn't catch any. Pero hindi po sila nagdalawang isip when Jesus told them to put down their net. Okay? And they were amazed by these very abundant blessings 
that they got from the Lord. Alos lumubog yung kanilang boat. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Like, for someone, I'm thinking, I, I don't deserve all these blessings of God. But why? Right? For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. They left everything and followed him. So in this cross-reference, the synoptic gospel of Luke, again, akita natin that it's not the first time that Jesus had met the four. The four whom he first chose to be his disciples. They were already followers of John before they followed Jesus Christ. And there is already a crowd following Jesus Christ. But they were chosen to be disciples. Kaya, ang ating point of study one is some are called among the followers. We are also reminded, mga kapatid, that we have all God-given uh, talents, different talents, different skills that uh, we could use to uh, in different ministries. Pero ibang klase ata yung pagiging disciple na gusto ng ating Panginoon. No? Anong klase ba yung pagiging disciple ng ating Panginoon? In, in all those that we have uh, read, it tells us that, again, hindi lahat po ay napipili to become Jesus' uh, disciples. But it's only Christ who has the eye to find people for people who are worth to be in his pool of disciples. Ito yung core group na tinatawag natin. It does not necessarily mean that everybody else cannot be in any ministry. It's very clear po. Hindi po tayo Ibig sabihin, hindi po tayo, lahat po tayo ay pwede sa ministry. It belongs to all. Okay? I invite you to 1 Peter 4 verse 10. We all belong to Christ's ministry. But again, we're talking about something else here. The discipleship. In 1 Peter 4, verse 10, it says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Serving others is serving the ministry of Christ. As faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Baka mamaya kasi mag-argue kayo sa akin. But no, there is no contradiction even to the Great Commission that says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. However, to be in the core circle of Christ, again, only a select few are being invited because the Lord has raised the bar. He set a standard so high at alam po, si Lord lang nakakalam nang nilalaman ng ating mga puso. At alam niya kung sino lang yung 
nakakamit nung standard na yun. Amen? Let's take a look at Luke 9 verses 23 to 24. Again, to be Christ's disciple within his core group, there is invitation, a calling. But Luke 9 verse 20 to 24 says, Whoever wants to be my disciple, this is Jesus speaking, must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. This is the standard that Jesus set for all those who would like to be his disciples. Continuing on with Luke 14 verse 26 to 27, it says, If you want to be my disciple, you must, by comparison, hate everyone else. Your mother, your father, wife and children, brothers and sisters, even your own life, even our own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. And if you do not carry your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. That's the that's the standard that was raised very high by our Lord Jesus Christ for those who would like to really follow Him as His disciple. Kahit sarili mo pamilya, kahit na sarili mo, kalimutan mo. Amen? When Jesus gave John, James, Andrew, and Simon, ganun karami pong catch nila, halos tubog yung boat. It only means that it's a good start of a career. Remember, these people are fishermen. Nagsisimula na gumanda yung karir nila dahil na sa pagdating ng ating Panginoon. And who among us here would dare to live his life when you see that your career is advancing. At once, sabi sa passage kanina, at once, sa verse 22, immediately, they left and followed Jesus. Amen? Ganun po kataas yung standard na isinet na ating Panginoon para maging disciple. Pero again, another question, why do you think that high of standard? Ganun kataas ni raise ng Panginoon ang bar na dapat natin na mami if really would like to, we'd like to become His disciple. Point of study number two. Because there should be separation of good from bad. In our scripture, dinagit po dito that the four of the first disciples were all fishermen. And in Matthew 13, a fishing net is compared to the kingdom of heaven. Let's take a look at this uh, passage. Book. Matthew 13 verses 47 to 50, 52. Matthew 13 verses 47 to 52. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that was thrown into the water and caught fish of every kind. When the net was full, they dragged it up onto the shore, sat down and sorted the good fish into crates, but threw the bad ones away. That is the way it will be at the end of the world. That's the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked people from the righteous, throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace, 
where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you understand all these things? Yes, they said, we do. Then he added, every teacher of religious law who becomes a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like a homeowner who brings from his storeroom new gems of truth as well as old. Separate the good catches from the bad. Yun po ang isang requirement ng ating Panginoon. Because good and evil grow in this world together. Yes, those words are not from me. Well, the Bible says that good and bad see each other in this world. Why don't you, we check it out? In Matthew 13, verses 24 to 30, and then continue to 37 to 43. This is about the parable of the weeds. 24 to 30. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the weeds sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. May sumalise. No? May sumalise sa ating panuan. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? Gusto mo, tanggalin natin, damahin natin. No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. Let them grow together until the harvest. There is a right time to uproot these weeds. There is right time to separate the good from the bad. 37 to 43, he answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out His angels and they will lead out of His kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom, kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Because of this, one critical task of being a disciple or a leader is to separate good from evil, as in the parable of the fishing net, as in the parable of the meats. Kaya po, ganun katas yung standard. That's why the standards to becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ is set very high. Okay? This is the reason why it's not easy to be in the leadership of the church. Amen? Now it made sense why Luke 14 says that to be a disciple in mind must hate everyone else. Not just the father and the mother, not just the wife and the children, brothers and sisters, even yourself. 
even your own life. What does it mean really for a disciple to do within the church? Yun po ang ating dapat na tinitingnan eh. Yes, now we know. Pero bakit ba? In our age and in our situation as churches, what does it mean for the leadership to do within the church? For some, the prevailing culture of tolerance has already penetrated, infiltrated the church. Tell it to my face if I were lying. Even if you've been here the longest time, kahit na kayo po ay bago pa lang, even in your other churches probably, the churches where you started, chances are you've never seen probably a church or you have probably seen a church who disciplines who doesn't discipline their members meron na lang. We think that to judge any misbehavior or misconduct, we think of it as sin. Amen? But to judge someone, throw the first stone. Throw the first stone. You are rightful, then you throw the first stone. We all think that judging enemies' behavior is a sin. We think of it as not being compassionate and loving. Kaya siguro ibang churches, they either accept or simply overlook these violations of the standards of the Bible. I know, I have heard even pastors sometimes fall into the trap of making serious mistakes. We, all, all, we have all heard a story about some. No? Practicing church discipline is neither easy nor pleasant. It's very awkward. But it is the Bible, not the church. Not our church. Must be our standard in giving disciplinary actions. It must be our standard for faith, the Bible. But remember that we have to practice it and teach our members that it's really important to discipline the church. We have to just make some careful judgments. Because disciplining is a mark of a true church. If you are only tolerant about these mistakes, these sins, these behaviors, misconduct, we are not being a true church. We are not being a true follower. We are not being true disciples of Christ. 
is a mark of being a true church apart from giving sound preaching apart from preaching the word and handling the proper administration of the sacraments the church it's biblical kaya mahirap po yung pinapagawa ng Panginoon to separate the good from the bad and so always we do this with the anointing of the Holy Spirit pray for the discernment that we may really be able to spot the wolves from the herd of our sheep Amen Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5.12 that the leadership is responsible to judge those within the church. Practicing biblical church discipline, it does not violate Jesus' command to judge that. Maliwanag ko yan. Just like what Paul told the Corinthians, do not associate with anyone who claims to be a believer, yet indulges in sexual sin, or is greedy, or worships idol, abusive, a drunkard, cheats people, controlling, manipulative, a slanderer, and many other. While Jesus calls for all its followers to enjoy fellowship with each other, sinasabihan din po tayo, we are also being reminded not to deal with this kind of people because they are wolves dressed like a sheep. Baka bigla lang tayo tagapin. Okay? So let's pray whenever we carry out these things. Pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Pray for the guidance to making the right decision. Matthew 7, 1. Do not judge so that you will not be judged. Sabi nga sa isang malabas, bawal ang judgmental. But this passage, this verse, should not be taken out of context. Dapat hindi natin itong mamimisapply them. Matthew also said that we have to beware of the false prophets who come to who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Hence, lagi tayong kumaw sa ating Panginoon. No? And ask for His anointing for these careful judgments. It's not a sin to judge, especially if you're in the leadership because you are placed there to watch over the herd because there is a need to separate the good from the bad otherwise lahat po tayo dito magiging bulok na kamatis point of study number 3 Ang hirap, Lord, yung pinapagawa mo. But we need to follow blindly, follow instinctively, without any questions. This is again what the Lord would like for His disciples to do. Come, follow me. Come, follow me. Give us a glimpse how calm is the presence of God. How pleasant is the kingdom of heaven. 
but not only that the Lord is loving and merciful, He is also just. Let's not forget about Him being just. While we love His children, hindi rin siya nagpapalampas ng mga kasalanan. Amen? Come and follow me. It's likely not a statement that will make us just do anything others would tell us to. But if it's the Lord saying, come and follow me. Diba? If it's just anyone, of course, there will be questions why. And for what? Must we follow what you will tell us to do? If it's God calling us to, it requires full trust in Him to lead us on the path where He would like us to go, where He would like to take us. Human nature would want comfort and company. However, these two are not present anywhere Christ would take us. I know, we all prefer things to be easy, fast, convenient. The problem with our passion for comfort is that we make it a high priority. A higher priority more than Jesus. Pero bakit tinatagal ni Lord yung comfort sa atin? Why is the Lord separating us even from our loved ones? Forget about your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, even yourself. Okay? Our comfort and company, we must leave them all behind. In Matthew 8, Jesus warned the religious teacher that he didn't have the comfort of a permanent home. Tingnan natin sa Matthew 8, 1920. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And then Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. The bottom line here is, if you're going to follow Jesus, we must be willing to be uncomfortable. I know, again, some will argue with me, having comfort in life is a blessing. Amen? Amen? Who wouldn't want to sit in these comfortable seats with this air-conditioned hall? You know, given the weather outside <laughs> at 40, 41 degrees. Right? But sometimes, if you sit too long, it also hurts your back. Amen? If it's too cold, man, it hurts your muscles. Amen? Yan. So, hindi dapat lagi nandun yung comfort. Okay? If you make comfort too high a priority, then you'll not be willing to fully obey what Jesus is telling us to do. Bakit ika niya? Kayo ba in a broken heart na? Na heart broken na? Kayo ba ay natanggal na sa work? O na terminate? O nawala ng work? Kayo ba na confined during the peak of the pandemic? Kayo ba ay nawala na ng mahal sa buhay? Did, have you found yourself already sobbing 
because of the heavy feeling that you have in your heart. We all have a thing. And in those most uncomfortable of times that we felt those pain, correct me if I'm wrong, that's when you wanted to seek for the Lord. Amen? We, the Lord will not call us to be just like Him. This is already the modern day. We're not going to just move places from one place to another in uh, barefoot walking or just a thin sandals on our feet, no? To protect our uh, feet by transferring from one place to another to do the ministry. Iba na po tayo ngayon. Okay? Hindi na po ganoon. But it's a different kind of situation that we are facing right now. Different from the times when Jesus called His disciples. But just the same, you will be put into uncomfortable places, uncomfortable situations. Even to separate the good from the bad is an awkward, uncomfortable situation for us all. Amen? So, the crazy thing is that um, often the blessings of the Lord comes when we are in the least comfortable situations like this. When you, those who are in, the, in sales here, if you did not reach a quota, it puts you in a very uncomfortable situation. And then you pray to God, God, please be with us, with my team, give us sales. You want to reach quota, right? Do not masinahan Often we God, when God gets us out of our comfort zone, it's when we see Him the most and that's when we feel most alive. Amen? Okay, let's stop asking God questions. Why do you want me to do this or what? No. Ang galina po natin yung mindset. Always asking God. Okay? Give your relationship with God the highest priority over that of your families. Binanggit po ito sa mga passages that we have uh, read earlier. Okay? Even the family. You put them behind. Dapat lagi God first. Remember joy of uh, Pastor Edmund? Jesus first, others before yourself. Okay? Clinging onto your family is a comfort for yourself. Diba? So, dapat lagi si Jesus. Okay? Now, I, I'd like to invite you to Matthew 8, verses 21 to 22. This is about another man, another disciple that uh, Jesus invited to follow him. So it's verse 21. Another disciple said to him, Lord, please let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. I I had to research on this because for 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 what I know it will just take a week 
person to bury a dead. Now, iba po pala. According to the Jewish burial customs during that time, a person's remains are immediately sealed in a tomb. There was an immediate seven-day period. Sa atin, parang seven-day lang din, di ba? Yung paglalaman. There was an immediate seven-day period of intense mourning, followed by a month of continued observance. Hindi kaya ito yung 40 days. And then after about a year, may iba bang loksa? When the flesh had fallen away, the bones were placed in an ossuary and re-entombed. So the disciple asked him to leave to bury his father could have been anywhere in the process. So it is sabihin, it will take a long time to bury a dead person during that time. And so, it got me to thinking, this disciple is only making an excuse. He doesn't want to be a disciple. That's why he's making this excuse to bury his father. Ito to naman po na matay. The thing is, he's making that excuse because he doesn't feel like giving up his life right away to be a changed person. He doesn't want to right away live a life, his normal life. To become a follower of Christ with an uncomfortable, in an uncomfortable situation. We think of us to be sinful. We consider us to be sinful. Si Lord naman di po ipili nung wala kasalanan. Tawin siya lang wala kasalanan. Pagkakano, wala mo ka-qualify ng disciple. Only He is righteous and no one else is. But the thing is, you are being called. It doesn't necessarily mean that a person will right away transform. Okay? It will take some time. But the Lord would like to see someone who's willing to commit to an uncomfortable life, uncomfortable life, following Him, an uncomfortable life to live with Him and to join Him in His mission. A life that little by little you must forget about sin. Amen? Many times at the top we put our families first that's why we are OFWs. It's on top of our priority. But sometimes, family puts so much pressure on us to do things that we really would like to do. And if you are being called by the Lord to be in His ministry, sometimes, even family will hinder you to joining the Lord's ministry. Yes, now we coming from standard. You have to forget even your family. You have to even deny yourself of the comfort in life. But you know what's the best thing to do with your family? Bring them along. Bring them to Christ. Amen? Amen? That's the best thing. This world could bring us all the comfort in life that we need. 
But let our hearts be content because God is the only thing that we need. Amen. Let's bring the feeling in us that will always seek for God in His life. John 14, verse 8 said, Philip, this is Philip saying, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Amen? The Lord is enough for us. Also in Philippians 4, verses 18 to 19, it says here, I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied. Now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gift you sent, they are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. Because Christ is enough for us all. Amen? So in conclusion, I'd like to leave you these words. That the Lord is something special for all of us. A treasure chest, probably. He wants us to all, He wants us all to have eternal life. And He wants us to live with Him with fullness of joy. This is the greatest treasure of all. He leads us, although sometimes we might not understand what He wants us to do, but He knows which way to go, and He knows everything that we will need along the way. He is our God that's all-knowing. He knows each one of us. He searches within the deepest of our hearts and the deepest of our soul. And He knows where to take us. That's why we just have to listen to this call. And listen, response to the invite to follow Him. In simple application, we must live behind our normal life in order to serve the Lord. Comfort may be limited, if none, but losing it is when you gain your life, your life in Christ. For church leaders, we are all at some point become church leaders because we are followers of Christ. Amen? And in time, we will hear the Lord calling, inviting us to be His disciples. A pull, a core of people to lead His church. We must be responsible to judge those within our group. Practice biblical church discipline because it's not violating the command. Rather, it's an, it's an important responsibility to carry out. And even when things seem uncertain, no questions. Don't ask God of His plans for us. He's all-knowing and keeps a promise not to harm us. Amen? Amen? I would like to invite the UPM in front. Please God. I go bound in the spirit that is from your soul to proceed. And well assured that this is by a divine direction, an influence that I am so 
and not from any design of my own. I go led by the Spirit and bound to follow Him wherever He leads me. We will no longer hear Jesus Christ. We will not hear Him call, invite us to follow Him. But we invite the Holy Spirit in our life, in our hearts. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will lead us to where Christ would like us to go. Remember, brethren, what would the Father tell us when He wants us to do something? He will tell us, come, follow me. And I will lead you on. Amen. This is my mercy. This is my offering. In every moment, I will hold nothing. Learning to trust you, even when I can see it, and even in suffering, I have to believe it. And if you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. And if you say release, I'm letting go. And if you really will be, I'll begin. And when you say to jump, I'm diving. See the trials how will obey. I don't wanna follow my own ways. I'm done chasing feelings.
And uh, welcome back din po kay Brother Justin Cedric Abejo and Sis Annifer. So this is the first time, Brother Justin. Yes. Return. Sige po. Pag-train po natin yung travel ni Sis Jo. At siya ito ibang prayer request. Okay. Let us all stand up po and uh, pray. Isawa na rin po natin ang prayer natin para sa food. May we request the workers. May we request the workers po na mamaya na po natin tuloy pag distribute Thank you so much. Yeah. And also, I would like to invite the elders in front of So we have prayer requests here, uh, everyday blessings uh, para kay sa pamilya ni Sister Beth. Sino po si Sister Beth? Healing and recovery from difficulty of breathing, fever due to wound infection for Ubergen Pangaliban from Isa. Brother Bob, uh, and ang safe arrival po ni Alicia Faith, and kapatid po at saka anak ni, apo ni uh, Elder John. And looking for good company, good salary, guidance, protection, talo kay Brother Robert. Okay. Let us all pray po. Uh, if we could lay our hands to our sister Jo here. Father, we thank you for uh, another day of uh, you uh, giving us the words of uh, to ponder upon, Lord. May these words not only pierce our hearts, uh, not, not to pierce our hearts to stop it from bleeding, Lord, but to pierce it to uh, start breathing your spirit in our life, O oh God. At uh, salam po, Panginoon, that uh, these words of yours we will uh, will use para po sa aming buhay at ang pagbabago po sa aming buhay. We are praying, Lord, for Sister Jo here, Panginoon. Thank you for her life and uh, you are so good in her life, Father. And we know that even without us uh, praying, we know that your uh, presence is always with Sister Jo, that you are always uh, giving her the protection everywhere he, she goes. Panginoon, we know that you are with her and you are guiding her uh, in, in whatever things that uh, she does. Panginoon, ikaw po ang gumagabay sa aming kapatid po na ito. We are thankful also, Lord, for the lives of... Um, Elder Joe's brother, Brother Robert, ang kanya pong uh, anak na si Elisha at ang kanya apo na si um, Faith uh, Velasquez, Panginoon. Thank you for bringing them over here, Panginoon, to be with the Elder Joe. Thank you, God, for the safe uh, travel of uh, the family of uh, Elder Joe, Panginoon. And we continue to pray for the healing of uh, um, his wife, Panginoon, at uh, dalangin po namin na uh, ang, ang, ang chance po na muli po ay may balik ang paningin ng uh, asawa ni Elder Georgia, Panginoon. And we're also praying, Panginoon, that you bring, uh, you, you provide Brother Robert Velasquez uh, uh, a, a job here in Dubai. Uh, may you please uh, bless him. Uh, uh, pain, Panginoon. 
Thank you for buying it on. Sa mga blessings ito sa buhay po ng bawat isa. Ganun din po, ipinagpapasalamat din po namin ang blessings sa buhay ng pamilya ni Ate Feli Panginoon. Continue to be with uh, her children, O oh God, as she is away from uh, her family, O oh Lord. But we know that you are uh, guiding and providing them everything, Panginoon, uh, because uh, you can see that uh, Sister Feli is uh, doing her work in the ministry. She's giving, serving you and uh, you know the uh, her heart Panginoon at alam po namin that uh, uh, her being loyal and submissive uh, Panginoon ikaw po ang magbabalik na lahat ng blessings at us sa kanyang buhay Panginoon we thank you O oh Lord also for bringing us back to celebrate uh, with us your goodness and your uh, mighty uh, decisions for everybody. Salamat po sa presence ni Justin Abejo and his sister Anna Fermon din pa rin noon. Uh, ikaw po pa rin noon na kumbay sa mga bahay ito at nawa po pa rin noon. Itigyan sila ng uh, regular off every weekend uh, para makasama po namin sila sa uh, pagpupuri at uh, pagbibigay ng buhay sa iyo. Salamat Panginoon sa darating po mga uh, linggo at sa aming pong preparations po ligamit sa 7th anniversary po Panginoon. Sinasabing po namin sa iyo ang lahat ng mga bayo nito. Bless everyone in this home Panginoon and bless uh, the leaders of this uh, church, especially our pastor, Pastor Ronnie, who is not only heading to buy but uh, the entire GIC and Panginoon. Ikaw po ang laging malalay sa aming pastor na ito at bigyan siya ng lakas ng loob at ibay ng dibdib ng sagayon po Panginoon ay mapakawakan niya ang uh, ma ma-administer niya uh, ma-organize siya mabuti ang um, aming po uh, uh, GIC mahal na GIC Salamat din po Panginoon sa aming tatanggapin ng physical blessing We know that everything comes from you Lord and we would like to give all the glory back to you with these physical blessings, may not only nourish the physical body, our physical bodies, but it will nourish also the relationship among us all. Thank you all so much, Lord. And we lift out to you everything, all these requests, Lord. Everything that we ask for you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Si Brother Robert po pala ang ating ano uh, pinagpray natin kanina. First time niya dito sa May Dera. Nasa po si Brother Robert? Ayan. Brother Robert, ito po sa harapan dito para makilala nila. Ito po yung younger brother ni Elder Jojo. Ay, sorry, sorry. Kuya pala. Kuya pala ni Elder Jojo. Salamat po sa Panginoon at dinala kayo dito sa amin. Praise God. Praise God.